my name is William Robison. I'm with Travel Personality. You can find us on Facebook. I'd like to share with you a few details about traveling to Costa Rica in the current pandemic time. Today is May 20th, 2021. This is our June 2021 edition of Traveling to Costa Rica. So I'd like to share with you some notes. Just so you have an understanding, we have developed this content through hours of research and planning for our own trip that we are making here in about two weeks to the Costa Rica area. So we've got a, quite an extensive list of notes to answer some questions that we are commonly seeing on Facebook in regards to traveling to and from Costa Rica. So this is a quick snapshot of some of the things that we're going to discuss as far as the restrictions and guidelines. This is just a quick overview of what we're going to cover in the next several minutes. In order to come into Costa Rica, there's no COVID-19 test requirement. Traveling back to the USA, you do have to have a COVID-19 test that we're going to discuss in further detail. And traveling back to Canada has also the same COVID-19 test requirement with a few stipulations, as well as a quarantine requirement. So first, let's start off with the guidelines that are requiring travel to the Costa Rica area from the US or Canada. No COVID-19 test is required from anybody coming from the US, Canada, or several other countries. This is a rule that's stipulated by the Costa Rican government. They're currently not requiring a COVID-19 test. What they are requiring is a health pass that you must complete online within 48 hours prior to your arrival. They're also requiring you to maintain travel insurance for the entire duration of your visit to their country. It has to come with a couple of very specific stipulations inside of this travel insurance policy. Now you may have had experience in the past of getting travel insurance that's going to help you in case you have to cancel your travels for another reason. What this travel insurance is going to be is a little bit different than what you may or may not have been accustomed to in the past. What you're required to have specifically is $50,000 in medical expenses that could be associated to becoming ill with COVID-19 while you're a visitor in Costa Rica. An additional requirement is that you have $2,000 USD in accommodation expense coverage in case you have to do a 14-day quarantine if you do become ill. There's lots of different places where you can obtain this insurance. Costa Rica actually has two preferred vendors that they have listed out on their websites. All of this is going to be down below in the comments for you to review later on. Those two companies, one is owned by the government, another one is a private carrier that they've already said is fantastic. Throughout the conversations and discussions that I see online, a lot of people are using other providers that are out there and available. One of them is Blue Cross Blue Shield, another one is Treywick, and Treywick is actually who we used. Now, if you want to save even more money, you can also go to another company called Insubi, I-N-S, ubui.com. We purchased our Trayric policy through ncubi.com as they brokered that policy for us. Our cost for 50 year olds going for about 10 days was about 50 bucks for both of us. So I feel like that, that was fairly reasonable. Now to give you a little bit more peace of mind and assurance on how good this policy is actually going to protect you, this policy is unwritten by nationwide insurance. I had no idea that that's who had it underwritten until I actually received the policy documents back after purchase. So that's just giving you some peace of mind and something to share with. Should you use one of the two providers that the Costa Rican government has pre-approved, you're set. You're guaranteed to be able to walk in with your passport, your health pass, and your proof of insurance, and you should be able to get right through customs and immigration fairly simply. If you use one of the other providers, such as Treywick, that is very commonly discussed, widely accepted, but not necessarily a preferred provider, we recommend that you send that to the ICT, which is the Costa Rican Tourism Board. They are the ones that are at the airports, bringing you in, checking your health pass, checking to make sure that you have the insurance in place. So what I did is I got out in advance, per the recommendations of the Costa Rican Tourism Board, and I sent a copy of our policy, a copy of our passport, our travel dates, and other pertinent details to them via email per the recommendation. 
Within 24 hours, I received my tourist visa extension form back from them. I don't know exactly what this is going to be used for. I printed it off. I'm keeping it in the folder along with my passport and other paperwork. And I expect that this is going to help make the transition through immigration much more simple. I haven't heard that it's a requirement, just a very good strong recommendation. Additionally, in order to enter the country it is going to be a passport just like we've had for many, many years. And upon entry, you're going to receive your 90 day tourist visa that is going to be stamped for the 90 days or less duration of your, your stay there. All right, so let's talk about the restrictions for you to travel back home. So I'm going to break this up into two slides. The first slide here is for the USA. The next slide that I'll share is for Canadian residents. We are citizens of the USA. We're going to have these details a little bit better. I have no guarantee of either of these details. I'm just sharing with you the details that we were able to find. You should go ahead and do your own research, but this is a good foundation to start from. So in order to re-enter the USA once I travel to Costa Rica, we will be required to have a COVID-19 test in order to re-enter the USA. We have to have this administered at least 72, I'm sorry, no more than 72 hours prior to our travel back to the USA. Both of the airports, Liberia and San Jose, are currently now offering these tests for you on site for about $65 US. The recommendation is that you come in for the test that's going to be held at the airport at least four hours before your departure flight. If you're traveling super early, that might put you into the middle of the night, so that's a consideration to keep in mind. You also have the option of having a self-administered test. This is something that's brand new, just happened this week. I believe May 14th was the first day that this was permitted. This came down through the CDC as a guideline, allowing passengers to self-administer an at-home test for the travels back to the USA. Now, don't go to CVS, Walgreens, someplace else and pick up a kit that they have at the store. Those are not yet permitted. You have to have a very specific brand that has been approved by the CDC. The only one that I'm familiar with at this point is provided to you by emed.com. The only test kit that they are making available to people is a six pack of tests. Not a six pack of beer, that would be very nice, but they're providing the six pack of tests. You have a family of six, fantastic. Our family of two, I'm hoping to find someone else to share those with. So, we're going to go and pick up a six pack of tests. They're going to be about 150 bucks to order online. And what that's going to come with is a QR code that we'll be able to scan to take the test via Zoom with a medical provider that's going to watch us and they're going to provide us with details inside of an app that says, yes, in fact, we've passed our, our COVID-19 test. So, as I mentioned, that six pack is 150 bucks. That does include the testing and the whole process. You can go to the airport and get it for 65 bucks, or you can go to any of dozens of labs around the Costa Rican countryside. And we've seen these priced anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks. Your option, whatever's most convenient for you. And obviously, in order to get back to the USA, you're going to have to have your passport. Now, with Canada, there's a few more stipulations that are involved here. Within the same 72 hour period of time, you must have your COVID-19 negative test. They're not permitting the antigen test at this time. So we understand that you would have to go to one of the labs, either at the airport or an outside labs throughout the country and obtain your negative test there. Once you arrive back to Canada, you're going to have to have a 14 day quarantine plan. And that's going to include a three day plan that is arranged for you by the government to be paid by you. Additionally, you'll have to have your passport in order to get back into Canada. And there will also be another COVID-19 test administered by Canada when you get into Canada. So I hope this information has been super helpful for you. I just wanted to take a moment to share with you some of the details that we've been able to learn through our planning process. I want to tell you a little bit about who we are again. Again, my name is William Robinson. My wife, Shelly, and I both run a travel agency that is US based. Our travel agency is called Travel Personality. 
My wife has been in the travel industry for a little over 20 years, so we feel like we have some extensive experience that we could be helpful in helping you with any of your travel planning. You can find us on Facebook, that's the easiest place, at facebook.com backslash travel personality, link down in the description. And if you'd like, we'd also like to invite you to join our new community page on Facebook, Gringos in Costa Rica. We have a lot of expectations and plans for what this group is going to be. A lot of it is going to be centered around expats and travelers that are transitioning back and forth, making these travel arrangements in either direction, whether you're going for a week, six weeks, six months, or six years, or duration. But hopefully we can build some community, be able to provide some answers to your questions. This video is going to be posted on both of those places to make them shareable in case you have somebody that you need to share this information with. And once again, throw out the disclaimer, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a medical provider, I don't belong to the government. The information that we're sharing here through this video is not guaranteed. You should still do your own research. But again, we hope you have some wonderful travels. We absolutely cannot wait for our trip to Costa Rica here soon. We will be sharing some of our travel plans and some videos when we arrive. And can't wait to see you on another side. Thank you.